In this video, we're gonna show the Stinger Vision FPV um, out of box experience as far as the VTX is concerned. And we have the Moto AI VRX over here. Uh, so attaching antennas, it's fairly simple. These come with the K1 kit. They're um, 5.8 gigahertz uh, antennas. Um, RHCP is kind of what we use throughout our system. Um, SMA. And that's all we need for the antenna setup. Uh, this is kind of uh, an N option. Other options can be used, but this is what we're using currently. Um, we have an unused HDMI port that's going to be capped off in the future. Um, the main video output is this display port output, which is a USB-C connection. Um, so in order to get HDMI out, we recommend um, something like this Cable Matters uh, USB-C to HDMI um, connector that's in our docks, the, the part number. This other uh, USB port is like a, like a standard USB style port, which we're going to use later on to uh, generate a new encryption key. It's also used to store um, recorded video. Um, so we will attach this uh, adapter to the display port out. We have a monitor here instead of a goggle system, but uh, goggles are typically used, but we're gonna use this to visualize the stream on boot up. Um, and we have just a 4S battery pack. The input is 2S to 6S into the VRX. Um, the Stinger Vision FPV, we're going to uh, attach a 4S battery here, and then we're just going to see kind of the standard boot up sequence. Um, by default, the systems will stream. Uh, the default frequency is 5805, and let's see that. So we'll boot up VRX. Get a splash screen, and then kind of a, a waiting to connect um, screen here with some um, OSD elements showing. So we'll power on the Stinger Vision. Now we have the stream going. So that's it to get the systems kind of out of the box going. Um, we'll later on show you how to change encryption keys if you uh, don't want to have all the VRXs and VTXs on the same um, uh, net, 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 net network, basically. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is show the um, OSD menu. Um, so I'm going to have Jacob kind of uh, run this. So we already have a transmitter bound. We're going to power up. All right, so to get into our OSD menu, we take both sticks down into the center. Oh, bound now. Once we're connected, of course. So OSD menu is fairly straightforward. So first level is just your channels or frequencies. So you can see you can switch between the two gigahertz band and the five gigahertz band here. Those channels are available. All right. Next we have our profiles, which you can set up in your VTX configuration file. So you can give these custom names and custom settings. So generally we just have default, long range, and low latency mode. And also of course we have our PIP mode, so either PIP mode on or off. And then advanced menu, which is not available in this video, but will be soon. And then we have an, our exit option, so this will just exit the menu without saving any of your changes. So if I come back, we're back on the same, uh, same settings we were before. And then say you did want to actually change something, let's say let's go to frequency 5745 or channel 149. And then we come down here to save and exit, move our stick to the right to confirm, and our system will change frequencies. And now we can see over here that we're on channel 5749. That's it for the OSD menu.